Hello, God bless you. Welcome to Daily Bread and Water, where we take a daily look at a Bible verse, because just like we need physical food and water for our physical bodies, we also need spiritual bread and water for our spiritual bodies. As you may see here, we got a new setup on the intro video um, slide here. I'm still going to call it Daily Bread and Water and then do the verse. But I just wanted to kind of give it a little bit of a updated look since we changed the entire ministry to Daily Bread and Water. So I hope you like the in, the this introduction slide. You'll see a new introduction slide for our Sunday video tomorrow. It will say Daily Bread and Water Sunday video. It will look pretty much like this does. And then we will use our old version with the daily bread and water at the end you'll see it you'll recognize it here in a little bit but as I've been talking about for several weeks a month or so now we need to give the Lord thanks and honor and seek him in everything that we do we give you enough verse of the day here at Daily Bread and Water, a appetizer of this bread of life. And it's up to you to read the scriptures for yourself, to open your Bible, or, open, or read a Bible app, or read through a website, but to pour through the scriptures to complete this meal, to feast on the, this bread of life. It's so important as we see deception all around. It's so important that we read the word for ourselves. Let's get into our scripture today which is 1st Chronicles 6 32 33 or 34 excuse me. Oh give thanks unto the Lord for his for he is good for his mercy endureth forever Yes, he is. The Lord is so good. And his mercy does endure forever. Whatever you're going through, God's mercy endures forever. He will see you through whatever you're going through. You know, there's so much deception in this world. Deception going on in your family circle of friends your church government the country the world so much deception the only truth that we have is the Word of God that is the only truth we have so open your Bibles. Read the word for yourself. Because God loves you so much. So just like a, a parent. He only wants the best for you. That's how, I, that's how any parent feels about their child. They want only the best for their child. They don't want their child to be a druggie all strung out living on the streets no they want all only the best for their child that's what God wants for us he wants only the best he loves us that much but sadly there's a lot of people that like a child and choose what path they want to go down. A lot of people are choosing a path that's against God's wishes. Just like a child picking a path that's against their parents' wishes. No one wants to see their child drunk, addicted to anything. 
to having struggles in this life. No parent wants to hear that their that their child is struggling to put food on the table. That's the heart of God. God does not want us to. He doesn't want to see us struggle. He only wants the best for us. But we, but just like with a parent, we can choose our own path. And a lot of people choose to walk away from God. Choose to not have anything to do with God. And sadly, their destination is hell. And people don't want to hear that. And they say, well, how can a loving God send, send me to hell? Well, you got to know, for, for starters, that hell is just separation from God. Eternal separation. It's suffering, torture, and torment. It's not created for people. It was created for Satan and his angels. But we all, we live in this world that is infected with sin. And sin is the wrong that we do against God, breaking God's rules by thoughts and deeds. It's not something we intend to do, but it happens. None of us are perfect. Try as we may be to be perfect, we're not perfect. And when we let sin come between us and God, it creates a valley that gets wider and deeper. And with each sin, it just gets, that valley gets wider and deeper until eventually you will take your last breath on this earth. And that valley between you and God will be so, so wide that you will be eternally separated. But God did not send you to hell. You sent yourself when you rejected Him. We all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. There's none of us that are righteous, not one. God knew that we are not perfect and that we can never be perfect. That's why God the Son left his throne in heaven, left eternity. He was always there. He's, he's not a created being. He, was, he always existed. But he left his throne in heaven, came to the earth, was born of a virgin, fully God, fully man, lived a perfect, sinless life. He took off his immortality and put on mortality for 33 and a half short years. And he came here just to die. He came and he lived a perfect, sinless life. He was the only one who could be perfect because he's God. That's the only reason why he could live a perfect, sinless life. Because without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. That means there's no forgiveness of sin. In the Old Testament, they'd use the blood of bulls and goats, the blood of animals, to pay the price for their sins. And it was temporary. Like a rope bridge trying to bridge this gap between us and God with our sins. When they sinned again, that gap would get wider and deeper. And that bridge would collapse because that animal sacrifice was only worthy to pay for one sin. But Jesus, when he came and he died on the cross, crucified, his sacrifice was powerful enough to pay for the sins of everyone who lived in his day that believed on him all the way to today and all the way to the end of the world. Your sins, my sins, everyone's sins. All we have to do is put our faith and trust in his finished work and believe that what he did on that cross was enough. 
And just like in the law of the lands, when you break the law, you can risk going to jail. There is a punishment for our sins. The wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see, what happens is Jesus, he takes our, he took our sins. And they bled on, he bled on that cross and covered those sins. Because without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. His righteousness is put on us, so when Father God looks at us, he doesn't see us who messed up. He sees his son's righteousness on us. And Jesus took the punishment that we deserve for our sins. Because like I said, the wages of sin is death. It causes the death penalty, our sins do. I mean, we know that our bodies are dying slowly, day by day. And for some, some of us, our bodies are dying a little faster than others. Jesus took the, the God's wrath on himself. He took our punishment that we deserve for our sins on himself. And he laid in that tomb for three days and three nights. And then he rose from the dead, from that grave, rose from the dead. Because death in the grave had no power over him. Because he was God. And he bought us back to him. Bought us away from the world. We were the world's property. We were a slave to sin. We were infected with sin. Jesus bought us back. He broke that sacrifice that or that hold that sin had on us. We were slave to sin. And all we had to do our faith and trust in him him alone put your faith and trust in Jesus and what he did on that cross and when you do your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life the Holy Spirit will come and dwell in you and you will be molded in who God created you to be when he put you in your mother's womb All we have to do is accept this free gift that Jesus gave us on the cross. And how you accept that gift is ABC simple. You just admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Admit that you cannot do this on your own. Admit that you need Jesus. Be, believe in your heart that Jesus is who he says he was. Believe that Jesus paid the price for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. Believe that Jesus did it all for you. See us for call or confess. Call on the name of the Lord. Confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Confess that Jesus is Lord. Confess and repent of your sins. That means to turn away, have a change of heart, go 180, do a U turn. You're not slow. Jesus redeemed you. And yeah, we're still going to mess up, we're still going to sin. But now we're not walking in sin. We're not deliberately sinning. We're trying to do the will of God. We're not living for ourselves anymore. Doing what we want to do. We're doing what the Lord wants us to do. Here's a simple prayer you can pray. The word says... You believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you will be saved. So, you can say the words out loud, say them in your breath, under your breath, in your heart, in your mind, but you have to believe in your heart who Jesus is and what he did for you. That's so very important. You can say all the words on the screen. Or you can say your, whatever from your own heart, but just cry out to Jesus. Cry out to him today because we ain't got much we ain't got much time. We are so close to 
going on. This thing is about to ramp up. Wrap up. And you want to be on the winning side. Because the world that we are promised is a trillion times better than your best day. I always say, think of heaven as your three favorite smells, your three favorite tastes, your three favorite places that you like to go or you love to go. Imagine a world where it's just that, and heaven is a trillion times better. And Jesus wants all of us to be there. All we have to do is put our faith and trust in him. And as you see, this is the old slide that we used to do at the first. I decided to use this at the end because in the first we have the daily videos. But I pray you got something out of this today if you did give God glory. And I pray that you're seeking God's face. You're praying to Him and you're reading His Word daily. I can't stress that enough because we are so so close. I mean, you think, you see all this stuff going on in this world. This world cannot last much longer. It truly can't. We see the Lord's coming. And we can almost feel it. But we know that soon and very soon Jesus is going to call us home. And we have to be ready. We have to be about the Father's business. We have to be praying and seeking Him, seeking Him in His Word. I can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing. Or maybe we'll see you in the clouds.